FatCon is a three-day fat liberation celebration, y'all. If you are intentionally losing weight, it is fat phobic. I ruined my life with food, binge eating, and lack of self-care. I think every plus-size traveler should get a free second and even third seat on an airplane. Mm. Mm. It's so good. I was a go-go dancer at a pride party and the amount of money that I made versus the amount of money that the thin people made was not the same. People still have a lot of work to do around their fat phobia. It is okay to be fat. We don't say that enough, but it needs to be normalized. Hey guys, it's Misha and welcome back to my channel. So, are you fat? Yes? I don't care. Are you fat and telling people online that it's healthy to be fat or that it's wrong to want to lose weight? it's fat phobic then i care you should care too because the result of this sort of online trend of this fat positivity aka lying to yourself and to others that it's healthy it's normal it's beautiful to be morbidly obese that is now resulting in actual influencers dying who could have seen that coming right so we're going to be taking a look at some of these influencers and doctors who are saying that it's actually healthy. But before we begin, please make sure you are subscribed and have hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. So you may have seen this iconic intro from Blair White's video, but in case you haven't seen it, I'll play it now. Because I'm fat, that doesn't invalidate the things that I say. She died. You ready to get supersized? She died too. Today I've got the big fruit loop. <laughs> He's dead. Join me on my fat positive radio show, which didn't last long because she died. One of the things I've learned as a doctor on TikTok is how many people are going to the doctor and just being told to lose weight. Now, I have always known, trust me, that weight can be a source of shame and stigma and something that actually stops people from going to the doctor because they want to go get help with their problems, but they don't want to be weighed. They don't want to get a lecture on how they need to lose weight especially when they're things that have nothing to do with their weight and people want to avoid that lecture on weight loss when they just want help with their nausea or something. There might just be a link there. If you're eating crap every day, if you're overweight, that can cause nausea. You don't even have to be a doctor to work that one out. I think learning from all of you creators and commenters how big of a problem this is has really made an impression on me and quite frankly has changed my practice. So I actually ask patients if it is okay to talk about weight. If they don't wanna be weighed at an appointment, that is okay. We actually are changing our electronic health record to make it so weight isn't even printed out on their discharge paperwork if they don't wanna see it. What? You know like the white savior this is the fat savior. Because this is crazy. You should be able to go to a doctor for a legitimate health concern and not have it blamed on your weight. This is not okay. Usually is when a white person thinks they're saving the poor black people because they can't do it on their own, right? They need the white person to help them. Trying to save the poor fat person because they actually can't take responsibility that, you know, they got themselves into that situation. No, it's completely fine that you're obese. And when you go to the doctor, the doctor should lie to you. The doctor shouldn't even talk about your weight. Oh yeah, you're nauseous? Mm -hmm. You've been eating McDonald's every day for a week? Okay, yeah. No, that has nothing to do with it. I, I was just wondering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're 500 pounds? Okay, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's totally normal, right? And what are they supposed to do? Make up some other cause? Just give you a sticker and a lollipop? Good job. Why would you even go to the doctor then? What's the point? You want someone to give you the go ahead, the green light? to keep eating and eating and eating until you're so obese that you just pass away, then go on TikTok and look up fat positive influencers. And they can tell you that all day long. I'm going to FatCon in Seattle, Washington, January 5th through 7th, and I want to see you there. FatCon is a three-day fat liberation celebration, y'all. We will be celebrating fat liberation, body acceptance, and the power of being in fat community. All right, everyone, I'd like to get started. I, 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 I'd like to get... <laughs> Okay, that's better. Welcome, everybody, to the fir <laughs> All right, I think we got a lot accomplished here today. Uh, we'll pick this up again tomorrow. You have a problem, you go to the doctor, they should tell you what's wrong. If you have a mental problem, you go to a psychologist. And then you can talk about your feelings. Oh, but I feel bad when the doctor says that I need to lose weight. That's for the psychologist. That's not for your primary care physician, for example. It is okay to be fat. We don't say that enough, but it needs to be normalized. If you are fat, that is okay. It is typically not a problem that requires immediate solving. It is not an emergency. You don't have to drop everything 
in the pursuit of being not fat. Erin said this other thing in a different video that I totally agree with as well, is that it is okay to not be healthy. We act like it is this moral failing, this cardinal sin that you deserve a scarlet letter if you are not healthy. Well, you're bringing up sins. There's gluttony. I don't know if you've ever heard of that one. Also, why aren't you fat? I mean, it would help a lot to normalize it, as you say, if you yourself were fat and unhealthy because it's okay not to be healthy. So you would really be helping the fat community by gaining some weight. I mean, that's the least you can do. You should practice what you preach. And there's a name for that and that's called healthism. But a good doctor will not judge you for being fat. They will not judge you for being unhealthy. They will not judge the decisions that you made or the decisions that were made for you, which is the much more likely scenario that got you to the point where you are right now. No, I don't think the doctor should judge you and say, oh, how dare you? Why are you fat? Why are you like this? But if you go to the doctor, you're there to get medical advice and they notice that you're overweight, they should be able to say you're overweight. You should lose weight if you want to be healthy. Why else would you go to the doctor if you don't want to be healthy? Just sit at home, stay on the couch, keep eating whatever you want. Why would you go to the doctor? She's a good representation of doctors nowadays and big pharma in general, where they don't want to actually tell you what's wrong. They want to treat your symptoms. They want to prescribe you something. We are also here to help you if you decide to not make any changes at all. We're still there. Here's some medicine. You're fat, but that's okay. That's your choice. Let's not talk about that one because you know, that might offend you. So let me just prescribe you something for the symptoms. Let's not talk about what's actually causing those symptoms because if we actually treated that, if you lost weight, then you wouldn't have those symptoms. Then we can't prescribe you anything. And of course you can't just eat healthy, exercise, work on that self-control. No, weight loss drug or injection or whatever. Two steps ahead. I am always two steps ahead. Daily reminder that fat women are beautiful. So first of all, of course there are people out there who find that beautiful. Okay, but it's not healthy. And I know this may be difficult to hear, but most people will not find that attractive. Most men will not find morbidly obese women attractive. Most women will not find morbidly obese men attractive. That's the way things are. I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the times, if you are intentionally losing weight, it is fat phobic. It's the same thing over and over and over again with these leftists because they all tend to be leftists, where you have mental problems, you're very sensitive, everything offends you, and now you want to take people's freedom of speech away. You want to put those people in jail for misgendering you, for being fat phobic, for not going along with their delusion. I'm not saying if you exercise and happen to lose weight that that is fat phobic. I'm saying when you are intentionally exercising to lose weight, altering your diet to lose weight, doing any activity intentionally to lose weight is fat phobic. And the reason why is because you are intentionally attempting to make your body smaller to fit into what narrative? The narrative that smaller is healthier. I wouldn't say anyone's really afraid of fat people unless you have some like serious mental illness where you see a fat person and you start sweating and shaking and you're afraid of them. I think very few people on this planet have that problem. A lot of people are afraid of being morbidly obese, rightfully so. You should be afraid of developing diabetes, heart disease, eat yourself into that state until you develop some sort of disease until you can't walk or breathe properly, until you can't run away if there's an emergency, until there's danger. I would think that it would make sense that people are afraid of that, no? That's kind of scary. Support that I get from strangers that root for me makes me feel like I can accomplish anything. Not a lot of people know what it's like to walk in my shoes. At my heaviest, I was 846 pounds. That felt like a prison. And I knew I had so much more purpose and so much more life to live. I been working on myself to become mobile again. I completely changed my eating habits. I ruined my life with food, binge eating, and lack of self-care. And I'm hoping that it's not too late for me this time. 
fat studies is um, one of the smaller and newer um, fields that is, is really quite worrying. Fat studies explicitly rejects the claim that um, obesity is unhealthy. And um, we argued that the only reason people admire bodybuilders uh, who have built their body with muscle and not obese people who have built their body with eating huge amounts of food is because there's a prejudice against fat people. I'm also wondering, where are the men? Where are the male fat positive influencers? I'm sure there are some, but I'm seeing a lot more women. Now, I don't know, if you have a theory, please comment because I'm not sure why this is, but I think it probably has something to do with how women are more sensitive, generally speaking, of course. And so when you see this fat model, let's say, this obese model on Instagram or something, sometimes when you look at the comments, it's like, yes, girl, you look so good, you look amazing, and she's morbidly obese. And the comments are calling her beautiful, gorgeous, now listen, of course there are people who they find that gorgeous and beautiful, great. But do you think that a majority of the women commenting actually think that's peak beauty right there? I think it was a Jubilee video that I reacted to recently. It was a guy, he was fat, and he was talking about how he acknowledges that he's fat and he actually thinks it's good when people shame him, they use the word shame, but basically told him, hey, you need to lose some weight. You, you want to be around for your kids, watch them grow up, you need to lose weight, you need to change. He actually thought that was really helpful and he was inspired to go to the gym. That's really refreshing to hear when someone acknowledges that what they're doing isn't healthy. I don't hear many women doing that. I really don't. It would be great. Of course, this is generalizing it. But from what I've seen, it's mostly women who are like, I'm glorifying obesity, I look great. Just a reminder that I am very fat and very sexy. And I am 100% glorifying obesity. It would be really refreshing to hear a female or male fat person say, you know, I'm fat, I know it's unhealthy, I'm not delusional. I understand that being very overweight is not good for you. But I either don't care or care, but you shouldn't be glorifying that. You shouldn't be normalizing being obese. That would be fantastic. But that's fat phobic. In many cases, tough love works, right? If you tell someone, hey, that doesn't look good. Or if you think that looks good, if your partner thinks that looks good, good for you. But don't promote it to women online and men who then think, oh yeah, I should just accept the fact that I'm obese. Probably won't live past 40, but that's okay because all these influencers are telling me that it's beautiful. It's all about acceptance. There are certain things you should not accept. If you accepted everything about yourself, you would never change, you would never grow as a person. If you get to a really dark place in your life, let's say, and you start abusing substances, if you develop a drinking problem, okay, should you just accept that? Should you just say, well, it makes me feel good in the moment, you know? And this is just who I am as a person and I've accepted that. You're at peace with the fact that you might destroy your liver. You're at peace with the fact that you might overdose. You just accepted it. No, no one should do that. And you shouldn't encourage others to do that. You shouldn't say, yes, you look so great, shoving that needle up your arm. Yes, let's normalize addiction. Or would you do this to an anorexic person? Would you go to Eugenia Cooney's videos and say, you look so good. Body positivity, you know? Yes, your skin and bones, you're showing other young girls that it's totally fine to look like that. You, you just look great. Here, there are some male ones, but I think they tend to be more low key and there's just not as many. Today I've got the big fruit loop. Oh, okay. It almost smells like a key lime. I, oh my gosh, what's that? Tastes like a sugar cookie. And we have the airplane situation where fat activists are going on the planes and instead of buying an extra seat because you're so fat that you need two seats, these activists say that they deserve a free seat. No. I'm hoping to use your um, customer size policy today. There we go, ma'am. Thank you. Just place this in the seat next to you. Okay, thank you so much for your help. I think every plus size traveler should get a free second and even third seat on an airplane. Sign my petition to make some real change. Sometimes you can't get a window or an aisle 
And so you have to be in the middle. Flying is very expensive. Whenever I get to fly, it's like a little treat for me. I love it. Maybe you have never flown on a plane because not everyone has, but if you have the privilege of getting on a plane, I would think you wouldn't want that experience to be you sitting in between two obese people with their fat spilling over onto you. But I'm glad she cares about her health with the mask and everything. Someone that cares about me a great deal came over to see me last night. And when they came over, I wasn't feeling well. I was having like low blood sugar. Innocently, they said to me, well, have you eaten? And I said, yeah, I had some pizza earlier. And they said, you need to eat something like a bit more healthy. Now, there are a few words that I don't allow when somebody comes into my house and healthy is one of them. I mean, I'm not surprised. Banning words. These people and the Xeno pronoun, Neo pronoun users, they thems think they should be best friends. They have a lot in common. They can't take any criticism. I mean, I could just imagine them locking arms and skipping around together because they're basically, the well, actually, the fat people won't be able to skip around. We may be on those little chairs. Mostly because I want my children to be raised to trust their bodies and to know what is best for their bodies. Your body does not know the difference between a chicken Caesar salad or this. And that's all you need for a balanced meal. Protein, fats, and carbs. There's a lot of really fat phobic people out there, even in the queer community. I was a go-go dancer at a pride party and the amount of money that I made versus the amount of money that the thin people made was not the same. People still have a lot of work to do around their fat phobia. So she's obese and was a go-go dancer at a pride event. I mean, she's checking every box. <laughs> I think another cause of this, is not just these content creators, but also the mukbangs because they're not always fat, the people that make those videos but they have this insane amount of food that they eat in one sitting and film it. And for whatever reason, people watch that. Sometimes they won't even talk, they'll just eat. Like I kind of get it if at least they're telling a story, they're saying something interesting. It's just them eating, usually very, very unhealthy food. Like I've yet to see a mukbang where it's like me eating a salad, a normal size salad mukbang. <laughs> No, it's usually 10 pizzas, 10 burgers, 50 donuts, and they just inhale all of that food for the camera. And then companies pay for that. I actually don't understand how you can eat that much in one sitting. Like, are you starving yourself the entire day? That's not healthy. The only reason I would find this useful, I think, is when you're really hungry in the middle of the night, maybe you want something not healthy, what you should do is you should look up one of these mukbangs because you will immediately lose your appetite. And you know, they, they need like a little baby sauces, but that's okay. Don't worry about two baby sauces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just made love to this That's all for today's video, guys. Please let me know what you think about these fat positive influencers in the comments below. Also, like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.